Jean-Auguste Dominique Ang was born in Montauban, France, in 1780, to a musical and artistic father, and by 1792, at the age of 12, the family resettles in Toulouse, where his father recognizes the talent of his young son, and enrolls him into a series of art classes to find where his gifts are best suited. It should be noted that the young Ang was as gifted with the violin, so much so that for a time he thought that it might be an option, but it was soon discounted when he sees the reproductions of Raphael's paintings and can't let loose the power of his work. And leaving the studio of his landscape teacher, Monsieur Briant, he starts off to Paris and is enrolled into Jacques-Louis David's atelier. It was a match made in the heavens. David soon takes the artist under his wing, and with very strict adherence to David's rigid training, Ang begins to shine. For four productive years, Ang continued to show great promise, and his devotion to his mentor was never forgotten, and by 1800 he obtained the coveted second place in the yearly École des Beaux-Arts competition, but finally carried off the all-important Grand Prix in 1801 at the youthful age of just 21. In the self-portraits there is the youthful confidence of an artist ready to fulfil the promise of his talents, but the road to becoming a portrait painter becomes a rough one, as his talents are tested by the critic Chaussard as having a lack of emotional liveliness about the personages he painted. But for a young painter just striking out to solicit employment, it is difficult enough to get the ball rolling than to straight away have to contend with opinions that may defer more work. But the preoccupation for Ang is more and more evident that his focus is not only on the sitter, but on using his innate ability to design, and he does it above all others, the linear facility for Ang is to find joy in the minutiae of design elements that surround his subject. His drawing skills are almost an effort to delve ever more deeply into the arabesque, which is not only becoming his trademark, but a necessity for his natural well-being as a painter. It is also well to point out that Ang is ever the humble student of Raphael, and history painting is his obsession to demonstrate his skills, not with values, but with pure pictorial design. Ang would prove to be in many ways ahead of his time. It will take some years, unfortunately, for the general public to wake up to his genius, as we shall see. One senses the youthful impatience for glory and achievement, ardent faith, indomitable courage, the self-discipline of a dutiful soldier is unconsciously depicted in his self-portraits and submissions to the Paris Salon of 1806, of which several are very ambitious and important works, while he is yet in Rome, including his Napoleon I on his imperial throne, and several portraits possibly including the portrait of his father, pictured here. His paintings are not at all well received by critics, to his utter dismay, and he states openly, So the salon is the scene of my disgrace, the scoundrels. They waited until I was away to assassinate my reputation. I have never been so unhappy. He vows never again to exhibit at the salon, since it causes so much suffering. Due to his disappointment, he breaks his engagement to Julie Forestier, blaming his self-doubt and his unwillingness to return to Paris. The negative criticism is too much to deal with. However, he is yet productive in Rome and tries again in 1808, two years later, with submissions of the bather and his sphinx painting. Confident in himself, he remains productive and continues with portrait work and other titles such as The Sleeper, which is bought by Napoleon's general and brother-in-law Joachim Murat. Although he has the bitter taste of rejection by Paris, Ang continues to receive commissions for portraits, plans imaginative and history paintings. He is granted studio space and a stipend to help while in Rome. In 1812, at 32 years old, he is content to marry Laura Loretta Zoega, the eldest daughter of a Danish archaeologist then in Rome, but his parents discourage the idea because of his bleak financial state at the time, and he breaks it off. Although facing uncertain prospects, in 1813 Ang marries a young woman, Madeleine Chapelle, who was recommended to him by her friends in Rome. After a courtship carried out through correspondence, he proposed without having met her, and she accepted, and by all accounts their marriage was a happy one. Madeleine's faith was unwavering in support of her husband. So, in 1814, with his connections to the royal family, he travels to Naples, and is commissioned for more portraits, at the same time continues his history themes that he longs to keep up, which is his obsession. 
his famous sistine chapel painting is also of this date and he again sends them to the salon in paris the murat commissions are never paid for due to the political disruptions and upheaval and they flee the country ang is faced with several pictures that are confiscated and held with years of debts he still pays for due to unpaid works and penniless is left to fend for himself to do whatever he could resulting in his now famous portrait drawings that have become some of the finest artworks ever done at this juncture it is important to note that napoleon is deposed and exiled but after nine months of exile from elba he returns to france to resume power known as the hundred days but is again forced to abdicate and is exiled to saint helena in the south atlantic and louis resumes power all the while ang's works are frozen placed in storage till things settle down this disruption however provides an unexpected but pleasant result for art his portrait drawings are produced by the hundreds and it is at this point we wish to focus our attention to highlight some of the brilliant portraits on paper that have been established as a record of perhaps his highest achievement although it would not be until after 1822 that ang would begin to receive his due recognition and the maximum regard by his fellow artists as one of the most important figures in 19th century painting with less pushback from paris nevertheless a re-examination of his work begins to take shape the salon is realizing his great contributions and while he is frequently frustrated because of his desire to paint history paintings stating he would prefer to work exclusively at history paintings and not waste his time on less important works his portrait commissions continue as well as official appointments by the salon his good fortunes change as he is given praise for his work submitted at the salon of 1825 and awarded the rank of chevalier in the legion of honor and just two days later at a ceremony king charles personally presents him the cross of the legion of honor which ang later describes as the happiest day of his life as we turn to the exquisite drawings by ang over a long period he covers a whole range of formats from the single figure half and full length family pairs and groups and portrait heads then there are the remarkable drawing studies for pictures it is fascinating to keep in mind that many of them measure little more than 13 by 8 inches with accessories that may occur much smaller at times but the breadth of treatment can be appreciated by every artist that has given similar exercises a try through his habit of always drawing with his eye even when there was no pencil in his hand the surgical sharpness of his vision was kept always at the highest he could draw lines with the unerring accuracy and swiftness of an archer shooting arrow he never missed they say that i paint swiftly confessed horace vernet but if only they had watched ang when he drew compared to him i am nothing but a tortoise the rapidity of ang's hand in capturing the essential lines of a moving figure is said to have been nothing less than prodigious he could have drawn a man falling from a roof with faithful accuracy wrote amori duval one of his pupils his love of drawing was a passion that became almost an obsession drawing asserted ang was three quarters and a half of painting by drawing he meant the expression the inner form the structure the modeling everything in fact except the coloring of the picture into his drawings he poured his very life and soul this is the reason that the collection of drawings and sketches hidden away in many quarters or museums are so treasured despite his limitations despite his quick-tempered irascibility despite a tendency to become a trifle ridiculous and even bourgeois in his accent he had hit upon a profound truth Ang knew that there must be a passionate adoration of the truth in an artist's mind if that truth is to live through its expression in drawing or painting or poetry art he realized intuitively must be a thing of love in 1826 ang opens up a two-room atelier at the rue de marais saint germain which has since been renamed to rue visconti by 1828 just two years later he began to accept students with 14 accepted to start but the number soon escalated so much so that he provides room in his own atelier for the overflow of students his dedication is such that ang often regards his pupils as family 
and in the portrait drawings he produces there are a number of his students privileged to have their likenesses forever immortalized by december of eighteen twenty nine at the age of forty nine ang is named professor at the ecole des beaux-arts to which he exclaims the hour of my independence has just sounded and i am free i receive sixteen hundred francs from the institute which lodges me my students bring me three hundred francs each month i can thus live quite well and set aside all that i earn with my paintbrush ang was made president of the ecole in eighteen thirty three however during this period there was upheaval in the streets with street fighting known as the july revolution where ang and his compatriot artists including delacroix paul delaroche de Verrier, and jean baptiste gerin stood guard at the louvre to protect the collections remaining there overnight the government again is overthrown with the removal of charles x replaced by louis philippe who was crowned king also known as the july monarchy and remained for the next eighteen years among ang's pupils there is hippolyte flandron who won the coveted prix de rome of eighteen thirty two and his picture was shown in ang's studio before it debuts at the salon the canvas of m bertin which hangs in the louvre is accepted by authorities as an example of ang's supremacy in the field of portraiture painted at the age of fifty two it is noticeably marked by mature restraint unsurpassed design and overall nobility it is one of those paintings that rivets the attention immediately it radiates a personality that is superbly convincing and befitting of the subject unflinchingly he evaded the winds of doctrine and dogma toughly resisted the flurries and dissensions of the revolutionary and napoleonic epoch his mind was impervious to the new and irresponsible doctrines of romanticism which had been heralded in by rousseau he arrived at complete maturity at an early age and he was well past eighty when he signed his final masterpiece that famous bain turk or turkish bathers in the louvre there was no diminution in ang's creative productiveness his works possess a timeless quality there seem to be no sharply defined periods the portrait painting of louis mathieu count mollet prime minister of louis philippe the portrait is shown at ang's studio privately a commentary from a journalist writes you enter the small salon that serves as monsieur ang's studio and all of a sudden you find yourself in the presence of eyes that see referring to the portrait a mouth that is about to speak a head that thinks it is a new masterpiece by monsieur ang or to be more accurate it is the distinguished descendant of the great judge the glory of french magistrature count mollet the portrait is presented to the palais des tuileries for the royal family to view at which time ang departs for his school in rome ang helps to expand the villa medici he adds rooms for the life classes obtains many more antique casts and of course produces even more pencil drawings numbering at least twenty-three many of which become gifts to friends ang remained in rome for six years he devoted much of his attention to the training of the painting students as he was later to do at the ecole des beaux-arts in paris as mentioned earlier ang reorganized the academy and assisted his students in getting public commissions including henry lehman pictured here in this brilliant drawing who was among those beneficiaries that gained a leg up at the difficult world of public notice for artists he remained a devoted fan of opera and considerable attention to musical fetes as one of the focuses at the academy he formed a long friendship with franz liszt and the composer charles gounod who was a pensioner at his time at the academy he joined the music students and his friend niccolo paganini who was also portrayed in pencil on paper and performed beethoven's violin works gounod wrote that ang had the tenderness of an infant and the indignation of an apostle his resentment against the paris art establishment for his failure at the 1834 salon did not subside in 1836 he refused a major commission from the french minister of the interior because the commission had been offered to another previously ang was deeply romantic he never let go of his long-time attachments and sentiment to the earlier artists of the renaissance and tried very hard to maintain their lofty performances but he was in fact as can be seen in his drawings a very disciplined artist of facts and realism as it suited him 
his ability to record faces and gestures are spot on with no hesitation to get to the point without error a lesson to all that would follow him as the century drew on as with that of artists john singer sergeant edgar degas and even the naturalist movement painters such as bastien lepage all were enraptured with ang's workmanship and qualities of pure design finally we have the two portraits seen here of jacques louis leblanc and his wife painted by ang in 1823 and were later bought by edgar degas when the paintings were offered for sale the portraits are a brilliant example of ang's portraiture though he lamented doing portraits he was nevertheless one of the best his workmanship never wavered and he is appreciated by the artistic community for the high standard he stood for and finally we hope you enjoyed viewing the works by ang and we want to thank you our valued subscribers remember to add a like so we can continue and till next time bye for now